Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my herb run guide. Herb runs are a very passive but very potent money maker in the game, and for Iron Man, it's really an absolute must for unlocking high tier potions. Herb runs are very straightforward, but with nine different patches in different teleport locations and a bunch of different farming boosts that can make a big difference on your herb runs. There's just a lot of information to go over here, so I'm gonna try to be quick to make it not obnoxiously long, but it is gonna end up being a little long. So there are gonna be some timestamps. You can skip any sections that you think you don't need. In this video, I'm gonna start with how to grow an herb. That's where I'll just discuss the mechanics behind herb growing. You only need the section if you don't know anything about growing herbs yet. Then we'll talk about farming boosts like magic secateurs and other things that can be used to get more out of your herb runs. Next we'll go over each herb patch including what you need to do to unlock the patch and the best ways to teleport there. Then I'll show my inventory and gear setup for the herb run. If all you need is a reminder on what to bring, what your setup is in general, this short section is exactly what you're looking for. And then when we're actually set up to do it, I'll go over a full herb run and finally we'll discuss the herbs that you should be planting and what you might expect in terms of like GP per hour and your overall herb gains. Farming patches in OSRS grow in cycles. For herbs, it's four cycles of 20 minutes, or in other words, it's about an hour and 20 minutes for an herb to grow. During each cycle, an herb can become diseased, in which case the player needs to use a plant cure on it. If a plant is diseased at the end of a cycle, it will die instead of growing any larger. You can water a plant. If your plant is currently watered, then it cannot become diseased, but it needs to be rewatered every cycle. That makes it really not worth doing at all. Unlike many other plants, herbs cannot be protected by the nearby farmer, so that's where compost normally saves the day, but we will be discussing compost in the farming boost section of the video. After four successful 20 minute cycles, you'll have a fully grown herb plant which can be picked and the process can be started over. You do not have to stand next to the patch like I have done in this example. In fact, that's the whole point of a farming run is that you can do something else while your plants grow and you only need to take a few minutes to go and pick them and replant them. Let's get into some potential farming boosts that you can use, starting with the simplest one, the Magic Secateurs. You need to use Secateurs to pick herbs anyway, so if you have the Magic Secateurs, you do get a 10% increase in herbs. You have to be wielding them to get the bonus, and they can be obtained by completing the Fairy Tale Part 1 quest. Next, we have Amina Seeds, uh, mostly the Addis Seeds I want to talk about. There's three different kinds of Amina Seeds, Addis, Kronos, and Iasaurs. They require 76 farming to plant and can only be obtained by killing the Hespori. When you plant a seed in an Amina patch, it takes three and a half days to grow. Rather than like you pick something when it's fully grown, it just grows and then in three and a half days it dies immediately. While it's growing though, you get passive effects from the plant. The Iasaur plant reduces the chance of any of your other plants becoming diseased, which is pretty helpful, but probably the least helpful compared to the other two. Uh, the Kronos Seeds give a chance to skip a farming cycle Cycle, which works for every patch at the same time so this is super convenient for like tree runs it can help for herb runs but it's really not as big of a deal as the Addis seeds if you have an Addis plant currently growing then each of your plants do yield more crops in other words you get more herbs from your herb patches it's only a 5% increase so you're not going to notice a difference on an individual patch but for all the herb runs you get over three and a half days you are gonna get more herbs over that time the farming cape has a nice boost on it. In fact, it's the same boost as an Addis plant, 5% increase in yield. It's not too common to already have 99 farming when you're checking an herb guide, but if you do have 99 farming, keep in mind that you should wear the cape while you're doing your herb run as it does help a little bit. Let's talk about compost briefly. This is a must for herb runs. If you use compost on an herb patch, it decreases the chance of that patch becoming diseased each cycle, and it increases the minimum amount of herbs that you get. So less chance for the herbs to die and more herbs from the patch. It's a win-win. There are three tiers of compost, and honestly, Ultra Compost is cheap enough and very easy to obtain as an Iron Man that I suggest always going for the Ultra Compost variant instead of regular compost. If you have a bottomless compost bucket, it's very easy to organize your Ultra Compost, but any of the leprechauns in your patch can hold your compost for you, so that's really easy to use too. There's also the Fertile Soil spell. This spell is in the Lunar Spellbook. It requires 83 magic to use. Using this spell on a patch is just like using Super Compost on that patch. You can get the Ash Covered Tome from the Volcanic Mine, and after you read that tome, you can then use Fertile Soil for Ultra Compost. You do need to have two Volcanic Ash on you for that to work. It's fairly convenient bringing the spells instead of dealing with buckets, but it's really not game-changing. I don't really bother with it. When you stumble on an herb that is currently diseased, there is still time to save it. You can use the plant cure first of all, which I brought up briefly before. They can be stored at a tool leprechaun, so just go buy a bunch of plant cures, throw them into the tool leprechaun, and at any point you can cure your plant if you happen to show up on a diseased one. There is also a lunar spell called Cure Plant. It requires 66 magic to use. It's more expensive than just using plant cures, but it's kind of convenient, I guess. One last spell that can be used on your farming run that's not on the Lunar Spellbook, Resurrect Crops. It's on the Archaea Spellbook and requires 78 magic to use. It gives you a chance to bring back a crop from the dead. The higher your magic level, the better chance. 50% chance at 78 farming and a 75% chance at 99 farming. This is not crucial for herbs compared to tree runs, though it is a bigger deal if you're an Iron Man with limited seeds. The spell only costs about 6k to cast and then you don't need to reseed or you may not need to reseed. This is really more big time worth it for like Ronar and Snapdragon seeds, but it is nice. 
There are a few diaries that can give you some bonuses on specific patches. The Falador Medium Diaries give a 10% increase in yield to the Falador patch. The Candorin Diaries increase herbs at the Catherby patch. 5% for mediums, 10% for hearts, and 15% increase for those elite Candorins. The Corin and Cabos Diaries affect two different patches. Both the Farming Guild and the Hosidius patch will get a 5% boost from the Corin Hard Diary. Also, if you have 50% Hosidius favor, then the Hosidius patch will be disease free. It's not necessarily a diary, but it is still a nice boost. All right, we're starting to talk about patch locations. Let's go over where all the patches are and how to teleport to them. For each patch, I'm going to list off a few teleports from the best to the worst one, in my opinion. There's nine herb patches in the game at the time of this video. I doubt they'll be adding a tenth patch, potentially ever, but it would be a nice rounded number. The order that I'm going over these patches right now is not, like, the order that you have to do them in-game. We'll talk about that more in the full herb run section of the guide, though. First, we have the Falador patch. Nothing needed to unlock this patch. It's available to anybody. The Explorer's Ring is a reward from Lumberage and Draenor Diaries. It has a teleport to the Cabbage patch, just south of this farming patch. You need at least the Medium Diaries for that teleport, which gives you three per day. And the Hard Diaries will give you unlimited teleports to the patch. There's a Spirit Tree patch nearby you could use, but that requires the player to grow their own Spirit Tree there. The Draenor Village teleport on the Amulet of Glory is not too bad. There's also the Draenor Manor teleport on the Archaeus Spellbook, which is just about the same run. You could always teleport to Falador with the classic Falador teleport. There's a Skills Necklace in the Mining Guild. There's also the Ring of Wealth to Falador Park. Uh, there's a lot of ways to get to Falador. Next, we've got the Catherby patch, just east of Camelot and Sears Village. Nothing required to unlock this patch, just like the Falador one. The best teleport for this spot is a Catherby teleport on the Lunar Spellbook, requiring 87 magic. The Camelot teleport's really not that much further away, though. I'll often default to the Camelot teleport because I forgot the Catherby one exists, but either of them are fine. There's a charter ship nearby, but Catherby's usually where I'm going to start a charter ship, so it's not super helpful, but it is something to keep in mind. Next, we've got the Arduin farming patch. Again, there's nothing required to unlock this patch. As long as you're high enough farming to plant the seed, they're going to let you do it. The Ardoin Cloak, which is a reward from the Ardoin Diaries, gives a nice teleport directly to this patch. Very similar to the Explorer's Ring for the Falador spot. The Medium Ardoin Diaries are going to give you three teleports a day, while the Hard Ones will give you unlimited teleports. The Skills Necklace can bring you to the Fishing Guild nearby, and there's also a straight up Fishing Guild teleport on the Lunar Spellbook. For me, on an early account, if I haven't gotten the Diaries done yet, or I'm just out of teleports in the Cape for the day, I usually default just to an Ardoin teleport and just run up north. This does require completing Plague City and a decent magic level. Worst case scenario, it's really Really not that far of a run from the Catherby patch. Making our way to the swamp, we have the Port Phasmatis patch. The only requirement for unlocking this patch is doing the Priest in Peril quest, which is required to access this side of the map, period. The Ectofield is the most convenient teleport for the patch. It is a reward from the Ghost Ahoy quest. Anytime you use the Ectofield, it would auto-refill itself at the Ectofunctus, so you don't have to worry about charges or anything. Technically, this Fairy Ring, code ALQ, is a little closer, but that's if you're like already next to a Fairy Ring to teleport to it. Maybe you got one in your player own home. The Ectofield is always one click away, so it is a little bit better in my opinion. There's also a charter ship in Port Phasmatis, so you could hook up there from the Catherby patch through charter ships. It's a little more expensive than unlocking your teleports, though. Sticking that swamp area, we have the Harmony Island patch. Definitely the most difficult to unlock. You have to do the Mauritania Elite Diaries to have access to this patch, making it often the last one folks get done. There is a Harmony Island teleport on the Archaea Spellbook, which requires 65 magic to use. It's a lot easier to get that teleport than it is just unlocking the patch itself. Plus, you can make tabs out of the teleport, so you don't even have to be on that spellbook. Other than that, you're not very far away from the Port Phasmus patch, so often I'll just use the Ectofield back to the Ectofunctus, and then make my way to Harmony Island the old-fashioned way. Now we're moving on to the troll patches. First, the Trollheim patch, which can be unlocked by completing My Arm's Big Adventure. This is a disease-free patch. The Stony Basalt is the best teleport for this patch. Using it requires making friends with My Arm, which is a quest further down the road, and we'll bring it up again in a minute. If you don't have the Stony Basalt, the Trollheim teleport is a great option, and lucky for you, you already unlocked it when you did Edgar's Ruse, which is required for My Arm's Big Adventure. If you use the Trollheim teleport, then there are a couple of agility shortcuts that will help you out, including this climb to the top, which requires 73 agility and the hard Fremenic Diaries. And keep in mind, Stony Basalt users, you have to have this 73 Agility and the Fremenic Hard Diary done anyway. Otherwise, the Stony Basalt teleports you before the obstacle. Once you can do the obstacle, the Stony Basalt just teleports you up top. Next, we have the Weiss patch. This patch requires completing Making Friends with My Arm, which we brought up before. Finishing this quest also unlocks the Salt Mine and the ability to use Basalt for teleports. As I mentioned, the Stony Basalt is going to teleport you to the Trollheim patch, but the Icy Basalt will take you to this Weiss patch. It takes you directly to the patch. Icy Basalt is tradable, so you don't have to collect it yourself unless you're an Iron Man. Otherwise, you could take the DKS Fairy Ring, talk to Larry, and take the boat back here, taking the traditional way to Weiss that you had to do during the quest. 
Now we're moving to the Zaya area. In the Hosidius house, there is a farming patch, which has no requirements to use. The Xerix Talisman has a Xerix Glade teleport on it, which will send you just northeast of the patch. By far the best teleport for this one. Uh, once you have the Xerix Talisman, the only requirement for the teleport is a single Lizardman Fang. Also, there's a house portal nearby. You could move your house to Hosidius and use a house teleport, or you could use redirection scrolls from the Nightmare Zone on a house tab to make them into Hosidius tabs. If you don't have those, you could use these memoirs to teleport kind of close, and even the skills necklace could go to the wood cutting guild but seriously just grind out that xerix talisman so worth it Finally, we have the Farming Guild location. You do need 65 farming to have access to this section of the Farming Guild, but that's the only requirement for this patch. The Farming Cape does teleport you to the guild, though that's not as easy to unlock as other teleport options. You could instead use the Skills Necklace to teleport to the Farming Guild, which makes for a few spots now that you could be using a Skills Necklace to get to. There is a Fairy Ring nearby too. The CIR Fairy Ring is not too far away, and it's what I tend to use early on if I don't have any other teleport options. I've listed a chunk of teleports here. I'm really not trying to make this section any longer. If you still have any questions about which teleports you should be using and whatnot be sure to leave those in the comment section below all right let's take a quick peek at the inventory and the gear setup i've got my nine seeds i'm boring so i'm just going with ron ours it doesn't mean that you have to do ron ours in fact we have a whole section about that and what herbs to grow i got the bottomless compost bucket for my ultra compost before i had the bottomless bucket i would just take ultra compost from the leprechaun when i needed it never really holding a bunch in my inventory i'm currently wielding the magic secateurs if you don't have them make sure you bring some regular secateurs with you i do have my other farming tools on me the spades seed dibber and rake uh, you could just leave those with the leprechaun i always end up banking them by accident so i just gotten used to having them in my starting inventory for my teleports, I've got straightforward options. I'm wearing the Xerix Talisman for Hosidius. I'm wearing my Explorer's Ring for the Faldor patch. In the Envy, I've got my Ardoin Cloak for the Ardoin patch. Uh, the Stony and Icy Basalt are for the two troll patches. My Ecto Field takes me to Port Phasmatis patch. For a while, I would just use that Ecto Field to also go to Harmony Island, but since I'm bringing Resurrect Crops with me, I only need to bring a Law Rune to also have in a Harmony Island Teleport. The Harmony Island Teleport is one Law, one Soul, and one Nature Rune. I'm using my House tab to take me to my Portal Nexus for Catherby, so in other words, this could be a Catherby tab. Uh, and the only other patch is the Farming Guild. I normally start my run at the Farming Guild Bank, so technically I don't need to bring the Teleport with me. Uh, the Skills Necklace Teleport from the Jewelry Box is great, or the the farming cape if you have it uh, very early on i just used that cir fairy ring at the bottom of the envy i've got my rune pouch with soul runes blood runes nature runes and then i got earth runes on the side this is so that i can resurrect crops if needed i am using ronar seeds and they are pretty expensive all right, let's go over a full farming run real quick. This is a pretty rinse and repeat process, very straightforward. Starting here at the farming guild, you can spam a farming spot for a couple of picks. Just click as much as you can, and then if you stop spamming, your character is going to pick the herbs a lot faster than they would normally. Once the patch is out, you can use ultra compost and reseed. If you did spam click for faster clicks, sometimes you won't use the compost on the spot if you use it immediately after the herb is completely picked. So keep your eye on that. Maybe wait a second to use your compost, or just make sure you see your character actually do it. You get that message in the chat box. You can use an herb on the leprechaun to note them up you don't have to clean them first but you could and then you're off to the next spot i like to knock out the basalt spots next since that does free up some inventory space with what i've got rocking here so we're off to the trollheim patch if you're using the trollheim teleport and you have to run through the stronghold it, this is a much slower patch it is very worth getting these upgraded teleports spam click the patch make sure you compost it up reseed note the herbs in the leprechaun and then use that icy basalt it's worth noting on this icy patch that there is a fire here called the fire of nourishment once you complete making friends with my arm, you can build in this fire spot as long as you have 35 construction. This requires two mahogany planks, two steel bars, 100 F salts, a 50 T salts, and 150 earth salts. All those salts can be something that you can mine from the salt mine, or you can just buy them from the Grand Exchange. After this spot, I usually tap that ecto field, make my way to the swamp patch at Port Phasmatis, spam click, compost, reseed, note those herbs. Uh, since I'm not too far away from the harmony patch here, it doesn't really matter since I'm teleporting there, but that's usually the spot that's on my mind next, so I'm headed to harmony island there is a sneaky allotment patch over by the leprechaun on this spot most of the herb patches that are accompanied by allotment patches you'll have two to work with there's only one bonus spot here i don't really bother much with using the allotment patches during my herb run but it can be pretty solid for adding to your farming gains and it's super convenient for iron men especially if you need like snape grass for your prayer potions Next, I'm using that Xerix Talisman to head to the Xerix Glade. Normal process here. Spam click, compost, reseed, note the herbs. I've only got three patches left, and I always try to end at Catherby since it's so close to the bank. So Falador or Ardoin would be next, and I don't always choose the same order here. I don't know what makes me use my Ardoin Cloak first sometimes, or my Explorer's Ring first. I kind of have them grouped up since they are similar teleports. That Those are the next two. And then after that, we finally get to the beautiful Catherby spot. This is the only spot that I use anything from my house for transport. You really could set up the majority of the spot to narrow down just to house tabs if you've upgraded your player own home with pretty solid teleports 
uh, but this is the only one that I really choose to do that with, with the Cather Report on my Portal Nexus. That's really it. All nine patches now have been harvested and replanted. We got a solid amount of herbs gained. We'll see you in 80 minutes. Finally, let's talk about what herbs you should be growing. You know how to grow herbs. Which ones do you want to grow? Unfortunately for this section, I don't have some secret just do this thing where it's just one answer for what seed to plant. Instead, I'm pointing you over to a calculator that the wiki's got. Snapdragon and Ronar seeds have the highest potential for making money on herb runs, but if you don't have all the boosts to get the most herbs per patch, maybe you don't have all the disease-free patches, maybe your farming level's low or you're not using ultra compost, you're not going to get as much money out of Ronars and Snapdragon since the seeds are so expensive. You got to get a lot of herbs per patch to catch up. That's where Toad Black seeds tend to come in hot. Aventos really aren't too bad. Uh, seed and herb prices do change often too, especially when updates happen, like when Next came out or maybe when Raids 3 is coming out in the near future. So this calculator is going to be more up to date on those prices than this video will be a few weeks down the road. It's pretty straightforward to use and it's very accurate for showing potential profit on herb runs. Keep in mind when you see that you got maybe 150k profit in an herb run, even though that took 80 minutes for that 150k, you are able to go do other things while that's growing. Uh, the herb run really only takes like 5 to 10 minutes depending on your teleports. So overall the profit can reach more like 1 to 1.5 mil G GP an hour is just only five to ten minutes of money making at a time so you're not getting that full hour in one sitting if you don't care about the calculator I guess my shortened version of this section is if you have all the farming bonuses or at least most of them you could do run our seeds and then snapdragon seeds in your disease free patches if you have lower farming level and less bonuses I would stick with toad flax seeds instead that's about it for this herb run guide everybody I don't want to go too deep into like the discussion video side of how good herb runs are here and tell you my full opinion on them I like herb runs but I could talk about them for another 20 minutes and it's probably like a 20 minute video already and that's gonna scare people when trying to click on an herb run guide seeing that it's such a long guide there's just a lot of things a lot of little things I should say when it comes to herb runs that can make your herb runs even better uh, try to say herb runs one more time in this outro. If you enjoyed this guide, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. I do stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description. I am also on Twitter and have a Discord, which are linked in the description. Thank you very much for watching this guide, everybody, and best of luck on your herb runs.